The Song of Hiawatha, 12. The Son of the Evening Star. By Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Read by Frank Blissett. Can it be the sun descending, or the level plain of water, or the red swan floating, flying, wounded by the magic arrow, staining all the waves with crimson, with the crimson of its lifeblood, filling all the air with splendor, with the splendor of its plumage? Yes, it is the sun descending, sinking down into the water. All the sky is stained with purple, all the water flushed with crimson. No, it is the red swan floating, diving down beneath the water. To the sky its wings are lifted, with its blood the waves are reddened. Over it the star of evening melts and trembles through the purple, hangs suspended in the twilight. No, it is a bead of wampum on the robes of the great spirit, as he passes through the twilight, walks in silence through the heavens. This with joy beheld Iego, and he said in haste, Behold it, see the sacred star of evening. You shall hear a tale of wonder, hear the story of Osio, son of the evening star Osio. Once in days no more remembered, ages nearer the beginning, when the heavens were closer to us, and the gods were more familiar. In the Northland lived a hunter, with ten young and comely daughters, tall and lithe as wands of willow. Only Oweeny, the youngest, she the willful and the wayward, she the silent, dreamy maiden, was the fairest of the sisters. All these women married warriors, married brave and haughty husbands. Only Oweeny, the youngest, laughed and flouted all her lovers, all her young and handsome suitors, and then married old Osio. Old Osio, poor and ugly, broken with age and weak with coughing, always coughing like a squirrel. Ah, but beautiful within him was the spirit of Osio. From the evening star descended, star of evening, star of woman, star of tenderness and passion. All its fire was in his bosom, all its beauty in his spirit, all its mystery in his being, all its splendor in his language. And her lovers, the rejected, handsome men with belts of wampum, handsome men with paint and feathers, pointed at her in derision, followed her with jest and laughter. But she said, I care not for you, care not for your belts of wampum, care not for your paint and feathers, care not for your jests and laughter. I am happy with Osio. Once to some great feast invited, through the damp and dusk of evening, walked together the ten sisters, walked together with their husbands. Slowly followed old Oseo, with fair Oweenie beside him. All the others chatted gaily, these two only walked in silence. At the western sky Oseo gazed intent as if imploring, 
often stopped and gazed imploring at the trembling star of evening, at the tender star of woman, and they heard him murmur softly, Ah, Shouwain, Nimishin, no sa, pity, pity me, my father. Listen, said the eldest sister, he is praying to his father. What a pity that the old man does not stumble in the pathway, does not break his neck by falling. And they laughed till all the forest rang with their unseemly laughter. On their pathway through the woodlands lay an oak by storms uprooted, lay the great trunk of an oak tree, buried half in leaves and mosses, moldering, crumbling, huge and hollow. And Oseo, when he saw it, gave a shout, a cry of anguish, leaped into its yawning cavern. At one end went in an old man, wasted, wrinkled, old and ugly. From the other came a young man, tall and straight and strong and handsome. Thus Oseo was transfigured, thus restored to youth and beauty. But alas for good Oseo, and for Oweeni the faithful, strangely too was she transfigured, changed into a weak old woman, with a staff she tottered onward, wasted, wrinkled, old and ugly. And the sisters and their husbands laughed until the echoing forest rang with their unseemly laughter. But Oseo turned not from her, walked with slower step beside her, took her hand as brown and withered as an oak leaf is in winter, called her sweetheart Nini Musha, soothed her with soft words of kindness, till they reached the lodge of feasting, till they sat down in the wigwam, sacred to the star of evening, to the tender star of woman. Wrapped in visions, lost in dreaming, at the banquet sat Oseo. All were merry, all were happy, all were joyous but Oseo. Neither food nor drink he tasted, neither did he speak nor listen, but as one bewildered sat he, looking dreamily and sadly, first at Oweeni, then upward, at the gleaming sky above them. Then a voice was heard, a whisper, coming from the starry distance, coming from the empty vastness, low and musical and tender, and the voice said, O Oseo, O my son, my best beloved, Broken are the spells that bound you, all the charms of the magicians, all the magic powers of evil. Come to me, ascend, O CO. Taste the food that stands before you, it is blessed and enchanted, it has magic virtues in it, it will change you to a spirit. All your bowls and all your kettles shall be wood and clay no longer, but the bowls be changed to wampum, and the kettles shall be silver. They shall shine like shells of scarlet, like the fire shall gleam and glimmer. And the woman shall no longer bear the dreary doom of labor, but be changed to birds, and glisten with the beauty of the starlight, painted with the dusky splendors of the skies and clouds of evening. 
What Osio heard as whispers, what as words he comprehended, was but music to the others, music as of birds afar off, of the whippoorwill afar off, of the lonely Wawanesa singing in the darksome forest. Then the lodge began to tremble, straight began to shake and tremble, and they felt it rising, rising, slowly through the air ascending, from the darkness of the treetops, forth into the dewy starlight, till it passed the topmost branches, and behold, the wooden dishes all were changed to shells of scarlet, and behold, the earthen kettles all were changed to bowls of silver, and the roof poles of the wigwam were as glittering rods of silver, and the roof of bark upon them as the shining shards of beetles. Then Osio gazed around him, and he saw the nine fair sisters, all of the sisters and their husbands changed to birds of various plumage. Some were jays and some were magpies, others thrushes, others blackbirds, and they hopped and sang and twittered, perked and fluttered all their feathers, strutted in their shining plumage, and their tails like fans unfolded. Only Oweeny, the youngest, was not changed, but sat in silence, wasted, wrinkled, old, and ugly, looking sadly at the others, till Osio, gazing upward, gave another cry of anguish, such a cry as he had uttered by the oak tree in the forest. Then returned her youth and beauty, and her soiled and tattered garments were transformed to robes of ermine, and her staff became a feather, yes, a shining silver feather. And again the wigwam trembled, swayed and rushed through airy currents, through transparent cloud and vapor, and amid celestial splendors on the evening star alighted, as a snowflake falls on snowflake, as a leaf drops on a river, as the thistle down on water. Forth with cheerful words of welcome came the father of Oseo, he with radiant locks of silver, he with eyes serene and tender, and he said, My son, Osio, hang the cage of birds you bring there, hang the cage with rods of silver and the birds with glistening feathers at the doorway of my wigwam. At the door he hung the birdcage, and they entered in, and gladly listened to Osio's father, ruler of the star of evening, as he said, O oh, my Osio, I have had compassion on you, given you back your youth and beauty, into birds of various plumage changed your sisters and their husbands, changed them thus because they mocked you in the figure of the old man, in that aspect sad and wrinkled, could not see your heart of passion, could not see your youth immortal. Only Oweeny, the faithful, saw your naked heart and loved you. In the lodge that glimmers yonder, in the little star that twinkles through the vapors on the left hand, lives the envious evil spirit, the Wabeno, the magician, who transformed you to an old man. Take heed lest his beams fall on you, 
for the rays he darts around him are the power of his enchantment, are the arrows that he uses. Many years in peace and quiet, on the peaceful star of evening, dwelt Osio with his father. Many years in song and flutter, at the doorway of the wigwam, hung the cage with rods of silver, and fair Oweeny, the faithful, bore a son unto Osio, with the beauty of his mother, with the courage of his father. And the boy grew up and prospered, and Osio, to delight him, made him little bows and arrows, opened the great cage of silver, and let loose his aunts and uncles, all of those birds with glossy feathers, for his little son to shoot at. Round and round they wheeled and darted, filled the evening star with music, with their songs of joy and freedom, filled the evening star with splendor, with the fluttering of their plumage, till the boy, the little hunter, bent his bow and shot an arrow, shot a swift and fatal arrow, and a bird with shining feathers at his feet fell wounded sorely. But, oh, wondrous transformation! T'was no bird he saw before him, T'was a beautiful young woman with an arrow in her bosom. When her blood fell on the planet, on the sacred star of evening, broken was the spell of magic, powerless was the strange enchantment, and the youth, the fearless bowman, suddenly felt himself descending, held by unseen hands but sinking, downward through the empty spaces, downward through the clouds and vapors, till he rested on an island, on an island green and grassy, yonder in the big sea water. After him he saw descending all the birds with shining feathers, fluttering, falling, wafting downward, like the painted leaves of autumn, and the lodge with poles of silver, with its roof like wings of beetles, like the shining shards of beetles, by the winds of heaven uplifted, slowly sank upon the island, bringing back the good Osio, bringing Oweeny, the faithful. Then the birds, again transfigured, reassumed the shape of mortals, took their shape but not their stature. They remained as little people, like the pygmies, the Pukwudgies, and on pleasant nights of summer, when the evening star was shining, hand in hand they danced together on the island's craggy headlands, on the sand beach low and level. Still their glittering lodge is seen there on the tranquil summer evenings, and upon the shore the fisher sometimes hears their happy voices, sees them dancing in the starlight. When the story was completed, when the wondrous tale was ended, looking round upon his listeners, solemnly Iegu added, there are great men, I have known such, whom their people understand not, whom they even make a jest of, scoff and jeer at in derision. From the story of Osio, let us learn the fate of jesters. All the wedding guests delighted listened to the marvelous story, listened laughing and applauding, and they whispered to each other, Does he mean himself, I wonder? 
and are we the aunts and uncles? Then again sang Chi Bebos, sang a song of love and longing, in those accents sweet and tender, in those tones of pensive sadness, sang a maiden's lamentation for her lover, her Algonquin. When I think of my beloved, ah me, think of my beloved, when my heart is thinking of him, O oh, my sweetheart, my Algonquin. Ah me, when I parted from him, round my neck he hung the wampum, as a pledge, the snow-white wampum, O oh, my sweetheart, my Algonquin. I will go with you, he whispered, Ah, me, to your native country. Let me go with you, he whispered, O oh, my sweetheart, my Algonquin. Far away, away, I answered, Very far away, I answered, Ah, me, is my native country, O oh, my sweetheart, my Algonquin. When I looked back to behold him, where we parted to behold him, after me he still was gazing, O oh, my sweetheart, my Algonquin. By the tree he still was standing, by the fallen tree was standing, that had dropped into the water, O oh, my sweetheart, my Algonquin. When I think of my beloved, ah me, think of my beloved, when my heart is thinking of him, oh my sweetheart, my Algonquin. Such was Hiawatha's wedding, such the dance of Peupuk Kiwis, such the story of Iegu, such the songs of Chibiobos. Thus the wedding banquet ended, and the wedding guests departed, leaving Hiawatha happy with the night and Minnehaha. That was The Song of Hiawatha Twelve, The Son of the Evening Star by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Read by Frank Blissett.